I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a great joy to meet you again through Facebook Alive program. And I believe in the past, all my messages must have been blessing to you. Now today also I'm going to share another part of my message. So uh, I believe you will enjoy and be blessed. I just want to remind you, uh, I am speaking uh, part by part on the topic, which church do you belong to? Even today also, our main topic is, which church do you belong to? Under that, last seven weeks, I preach in a different, different uh, main headings. So the first week I spoke about there are three types of church in the world. One is fighting church or warring church, you can call it. That church, the Bible says, we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The church who fights on the earth still they are not seated in the heavenly places. That's the reason they deal everything on the earthly realm. Right? So, lifetime they fight against the devil, they never get victory. Right? And the second church I was talking about, the defeated church. Now, if you take as a Christian, you are born again, and uh, after being born again, you live on the earth as a defeated person in every area of your life. Dragged through your life. And then after death, you go to heaven. That's a defeated church. Thirdly, the victorious church. The victorious church knows that we are reigning with Christ Jesus. We rule and reign. We are the people with the authority and power, right? The second week I spoke the origin of Satan and his fall, and also I discussed a little bit about the kingdom of darkness, unseen world, right? And the third week I spoke about rightly dividing the man, spirit, soul, and body. Third week I spoke about the spirit and uh, soul, and the fourth week, I spoke about the body. And the fifth, fifth week, I spoke about the spiritual warfare. Today, many churches are having spiritual warfare unbiblically. Right? So the sixth week, I explained how to have our spiritual warfare biblically. The scriptural way to do the spiritual warfare. And then uh, uh, seventh week, this last week, I spoke about how to pull down the strongholds, right? So today, I want to discuss, uh, talk about praying scripturally to thwart the kingdom of darkness. Or praying scripturally to stop furthering the kingdom of darkness, right? As believers... If we are not supposed to pull down strongholds in the villages, in the cities, in the nations, then how are we going to handle this uh, spirit world who is controlling, which is controlling about us, the city, the villages, and the nations, whatever it is. How to stop their activity on the earth? Right? So if you are not supposed to pull down the strongholds, I also discussed last week, the strongholds are built in the people's mind, not uh, some areas, uh, geographical area. It's in the mind. Okay? 
Now, uh, how are we going to handle this uh, kingdom of darkness while we are living on this earth? Okay, so turn with me to Matthew chapter 9 verses 37 and 38. Matthew chapter 9 verses 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send, the, send out the laborers into his harvest. Right? I like to read verse 36 also. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. He saw the multitude and he was moved with compassion for them. Right? So this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. The same Jesus who moved with compassion after seeing the people, their struggles, difficulties, right? And uh, so the same Jesus is here today in order to look at the people and move with the compassion. Because God loves the world. That's the reason he sent his only begotten son to this world to die. Right? So saying that, and uh, according to verse 37, then he said to the, his disciple, there, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So with one person, you can't serve the world. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay? With one preacher, you can't save the world. We know after Jesus died, the disciples carried the ministry. They started preaching the gospel. So the responsibility is given to the believers today. But people are not willing to go to preach the gospel. That's the reason God said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to the harvest field. Pray. Right? And uh, before I explain this verse, I just want to give an example. If you are, now we are talking about the harvest. If you want to have a, a harvest, there's a process that you have to do, that you have to involve. As a farmer, in natural, as a farmer, you have, if you want to have a great harvest in your harvest field, first of all, you have to prepare the ground. You have to prepare the field in order to sow the seed. Preparing the ground is the first thing uh, any farmer will do. Unprepared ground will never produce good crops. So first thing, as a farmer, you prepare the ground. Secondly, after preparing the ground, you sow the seed. You sow the seed. If you are expecting a great harvest, you have to sow the seed. Thirdly, after sowing the seed, you have to pour water. Or you have to supply water to the field. Or you have to pray God or you have to expect God to send rain. Either way, whatever it is, the plants need water to grow. And then, you have to wait patiently after some time, then you can see the fields are ripe, and then you can have a good harvest. That's the way it works. Right? Spiritually, exactly the same way it happens. Right? 
always compare the natural thing with the spiritual thing spiritually we have to prepare the ground for the souls to be won to the kingdom of god so how are we going to pray how are we going to prepare the ground the principle is first of all you must have earnest praying people right only way you can prepare the ground through prayer right through prayer not pulling down the strong holes prepare by prayer the more you pray regarding certain areas it can be a village it can be a town it can be a, a city or it can be a nation regarding anything if you pray sincerely god to save all those people are those who are living in that area you are preparing the ground i have heard many testimonies i have read many testimonies about many preachers those who are used by god powerfully right so all those people they always go and pray before they have the meeting in that area the prepare the prayer prepares the people's heart in order to receive the gospel so that's the way you prepare the ground and then after preparing through prayer then you go and sow the seed which is the word of god or preach in the gospel you can pray any amount but without sowing the seed you will never see a plant growing you will never see a harvest unless you sow the seed right in the spiritual mode so the same thing once when you prepare the ground by prayer through prayer and then you go and preach the gospel you share the gospel with the unbelievers you share the gospel with sinners that is a so a seed you are sowing why you have to preach the gospel why you have to share the word of god because uh, according to psalm 119 verse 113 One three zero, Psalm one hundred nineteen, verse one hundred thirty. Say the entrance of the word giveth light. The entrance of the word giveth light. So when the word of God goes into the people's heart, then the light comes in. If the word of God doesn't go to the people's heart. they will continually to live with darkness so the word only brings light to people so that's the reason when you share the gospel with somebody else the word what are you are speaking the word what are you are sharing that word brings light to the people that's a key right sowing the seed you can pray any amount but unless you share the gospel nobody will get saved that strategy that uh, uh, thing is happening all over the world in every churches it's sad to see praying won't do anything right prayer will prepare the ground but you have to share the gospel in order to people to get saved right so preaching preaching the gospel sharing the gospel is the responsibility of every christian is a responsibility of every christian okay some people they put the uh, responsibility on the preachers but it's a responsibility of the christians when i say christian apostle is responsible to share the gospel prophets are responsible to share the gospel the evangelist are responsible to share the gospel the pastors are responsible to preach the gospel the teachers are responsible to 
preach the gospel the believers are responsible to share the gospel all the christians all the christian every born again believer must share the gospel turn with me to ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to to 13 and he himself gave some to be apostle some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ right see these five fold ministries are given to the body of christ in order to equip the saints that is the responsibility of the five fold ministry equip the saints equipping mean what does it say for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry once when the believers are equipped with the knowledge of god they have to go in involved in the work of the ministry which is the preaching of the gospel now people put the responsibility on the preachers oh they are called for full time ministry we are not called they are for we are uh, let them do preaching the gospel sharing the gospel we don't have time but god's word say it's a responsibility of the believers every equipped person if you are grown up person you will definitely share the gospel with the others according to the scripture verse 13 it say till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ the simple reason every believer if they are not grown in god if they don't have the knowledge of god they won't share the gospel they won't do the work of the ministry so you can judge there whether they are grown up people or not grown up okay anyhow my responsibility to share with you it's a actually share in the gospel is the responsibility of every believer what are the church if the believers share the gospel the church will grow when the believers are not sharing the gospel that church will not grow because the believers are not taking the responsibility of sharing the gospel right and the second thing i want to say here matthew chapter 28 verse 19 it say go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations here jesus advising the disciple go into the world don't stay at home lots of people are there they stay at home and pray stay at home and pray for the laborers to send stay at home they never go out and share the gospel with the others but jesus commanded the disciples go into all world in order to preach the gospel we have to get out of the building we have to get out of the house right and the, and the second thing he say make disciple he didn't say go into the world and pull down strong holes can you see that go into the world and preach the gospel share the gospel 
make the people make them dis make disciple for the kingdom bring some followers of Christ in there he never said pull down stronghold go out and pull down stronghold okay right uh, also if the believers pray only pray and never go out and win the souls you will never have harvest right no sowing no harvest that's normal okay and also the second thing first you prepare the ground secondly you sow the water uh, i mean you sow the seed thirdly what you have to do you have to pour water supply water to the plants supply water what is very important for the plant to grow otherwise now any farmer to his field once when he sow the seed definitely he has to supply water for the seed to grow if not if there's no water supply in that area you expect god to send rain so same as two with the spiritual thing without water you cannot have harvest so what is necessary so in the spiritual side when you take our water the bible says water is a symbol of the holy spirit i can i don't have time to prove it from the word of god but in general i'm talking the water is a symbol of holy spirit so in the spirit realm when you talk about holy spirit already you pray you have prayed to god prepare the ground now you have sow the seed unless holy spirit involves in your harvest the people's heart will not prepared to receive christ that is the reason any farmer pour the water or uh, supply water to the plant because he want good harvest let me put it this way simply if you want a village to one for the god if you want a city to turn and come to christ if you want your nation wherever you are if you want your nation to be saved come to god the people of that nation or the city or the village wherever their heart has to be ready to receive the harvest only the holy spirit can work in their heart so when the rain pours out so the entire area will be wet same way when you pray for the holy spirit to come and fill the nation then he will prepare everything for the harvest turn with me to actually zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 ask the lord for rain in the time of the latter rain that's a former rain there's a latter rain the book of joel talk about any farmer they need rain in order to sow the seed that's a former rain during the harvest time also they need rain in order to have a good harvest okay so here the prophet say ask the lord for rain in the time of the latter rain the lord will make flashing cloud he will give them showers of rain grass in the field for everyone right spiritually speaking when you pray when you ask ask god send the holy spirit to your nation he will come in make the people 
heart ready for the kingdom of God. Right? Uh, in other words, actually, we can pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all nations. Right? But you can pray for the Holy Spirit to come. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But unless if you share the gospel with people, people won't get saved. There must be someone to share the gospel. Right? This is a scripture way to change the nation. Not pulling down the stone hole. This is a simple and the biblical way, the scriptural way to change the nation or the city or the village or the town. Right? And uh, uh, no matter how good the harvest can be. But if the laborers are not going to for the harvest field to harvest, that harvest will get ruined. That's the reason Jesus said to the disciple, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to the field. Right? And uh, uh, so what you do? Secondly, ask God to send continually to send the rain of the Holy Spirit. Continue. Don't stop halfway. You see? It's very important to pray continually. Thirdly, keep preaching the gospel. Whether people accept or reject, it is not your problem. You can't expect all the people to accept Christ when you pray. There are some, because the reason people have their free will, choose right and wrong. Some people, when they hear the gospel, they will choose to believe God. Some people, even they, even uh, when they hear the gospel, they will choose to not to come to God. So, the God will deal with them. So you don't need to worry about it. your responsibility to share the gospel. Right? Fourthly, you will have a great harvest. Right? And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6, Apostle Paul is dealing with the uh, Corinthian church. The Corinthian church is a really, uh, the people are living in sin. There were lots of divisions, no unity. In that, uh, that type of situation, Apostle Paul is here talking to them. See, uh, maybe I'll read a few verses before. Uh, verse 3 says, For you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. They are ministers. And verse 6 says, I planted, Apostle Paul said, I planted the seed, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. Right? God gave the increase. So what you do? Let somebody prepare the ground. Let somebody sow the seed. Let somebody water. God will give increase. But this has to be done. Ground must be prepared through prayer. Somebody must share the gospel. And the Holy Spirit has to work in order to bring the harvest. You pray for that. And then you will have a good harvest. Right? Preparing ground is very important. But the problem, some people they prepare the ground through prayer, I can say unbiblical prayer. Uh, even though they pray, if you pray unbiblically, 
that prayer won't bring that ground won't be prepared properly there are a whole lot of people they what they do they go and they they say i we i we came to prepare the ground to uh, preach the gospel in the area we are going to spend uh, days in prayer and then they say they when they come together for prayer to prepare the ground they from morning till evening they pull down the stone walls of that area stone walls stone walls stone walls we pull down the stone walls we pull down the stone walls in the end there's no harvest why they prayed unbiblically unbiblically so you can pray scripturally biblically you can pray go to the scripture what the word of god says and also you can pray effectively scripturally that will bring the that will prepare the ground right once when you pray uh effectively satan really satan strategies will be revealed to you right then you'll be able to thwart the kingdom of God, uh, darkness you can thwart the kingdom of darkness if you pray unscripturally nothing will happen god won't reveal anything in a prayer right uh another way to say when you pray you can push back the works of satan in that area only through prayer you can do it right and uh, so let's go to isaiah 43:26 isaiah 43:26 says put me in remembrance let us contend together state your case that you may be acquitted put me in remembrance let us contend together state your case god say put me in remembrance put me in remembrance do you think god is forgotten about that no god has not forgotten god wants you to remember so every time when you pray biblically according to the word of god you quote scriptures according to the verse when in your prayer you can pray lord you said in your word in such and such a book in such and such a chapter in such and such a verse say you said like that i believed it i prayed based my prayer upon that scripture now lord i know you are not a man to lie you will fulfill what you have promised therefore you can put god into remembrance and then you can plead your case with god one time shall say plead your case with him then when he say oh yeah i heard you are praying like this okay let us do the thing immediately the answer comes in right praying according to the word of god it always put god into remembrance right let us pray together ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31 so i sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that i should not destroy it but i found no one right what god is saying i sought for a man he is not seeking for a group he sought for a man one man for what I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap only one man to stand in the gap right before me on behalf of the land and that I should not destroy it 
but I found no one. And then verse 31 says like this, Therefore, I have poured out my in indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed their deeds on their own head, says the Lord God. What is saying? One thing we have to understand. When God passed judgment on somebody, that means they did something against God. He will give opportunity for them to repent. Right? So before God destroys a place, He doesn't like to destroy. One other thing we have to understand in between, just because God is destroying the wicked ones, the sin for sinners, that doesn't mean God is wicked. He's unjust. No, 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 no. The Bible clearly says, God is a just God. If you do good, you'll be blessed. If you do bad, you'll be punished. That's a normal thing in the word of God. Because God is a just God. He doesn't show favoritism to anybody. He's a righteous judge. Right? But he doesn't like any should perish. That's the reason here God is expecting one person at least from them, one person from the nation to stand in the gap in order to stop the judgment of God over the nation. Right? But God said, I couldn't find none. There's a sad state of the nation. One person. Right? And uh, so, uh, if God can find somebody to stand in the gap, he could have saved or protected that nation. Right? Uh, he could have stopped the judgment. So, uh, we know one man from the Bible. If you go to book of Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 to 33, if you read it, and uh, there we, seek, we can see a, a account of Abraham. So, Sodom and Gomorrah was filled with sin, wickedness. So God says, I'm just briefing uh, from that portion because we don't have time, much time. So God, before, when he came, uh, came and saw, the wickedness was full there. So at last God decided to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. But anyhow, he said, without informing my friend Abraham, covenant partner, I'm not going to destroy it. So when Abraham, God came to Abraham and uh, Abraham and God having discussion. So Abraham was really upset that he's going to destroy. Because Lot was there. His brother's son was there. So he must have concern about all the city. Right? But anyhow, Abraham was pleading to God, interceding with God. First of all, he was asking, Lord, if there's 50 righteous people in that city, will he destroy? He's, God said, because of 50 people, I will not destroy. Then Abraham asked, started asking again, Lord, if there's five less, if there are 45 people there, righteous people are there, will he destroy because of five? God said, no, I won't destroy. And then Abraham asked God, if there's 40 people, 40 righteous, will he destroy? God said, no, I won't destroy. Then again, Abraham started bargaining with God. He said, if there's, any, if there's 30 righteous people in the city, will he destroy? God said, no, because 30 people, I won't 
because 30 righteous people, I won't destroy that place. Then he came down to 20. Lord, if there's 20 people, 20 righteous in that place, will you destroy it? God said, no. <coughs> it's just me. God's answer is always the same. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Then Abraham started demanding one more time. He said, Lord, only one more time I'm going to ask you. If there's 10 righteous people in that city, will you destroy? God never said to Abraham, I will make you only one time I'm going to give you a chance. You can't demand any more. God never said. He wanted Abraham to ask more. But Abraham, he left it halfway. God said, because of 10 people, I will not destroy. Because of 10 righteous people. Then the Bible says, God went on his way. Abraham went his way. Abraham could have done, Lord, if there's five righteous people. Even he could have come down to, if there's only three righteous people, Lot and his wife and two girls, two daughters of him. There were four. He could have demanded, if there's four, three, will you destroy? God's answer is the same thing. He could have said, no, because of those three, I will save that city. But Abraham left it halfway in his intercessory prayer. Today, in the body of Christ, same damage is taking place. When you say intercessory prayer, there will be a whole lot of people will gather. After a few days, most of them won't be there. Few people will be le left. But I want to encourage you. If you are one of those few people, don't get discouraged. God wants only one person to save the nation, save the city, save the village. If you are an interceding person, Stand strong, just like <clears throat> Daniel. One man. He never gathered a group. One man. One man. Because they were in their captivity. One time, he, when he was reading the word of God, he found out. Earlier prophet like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they prophesied. One day, the people, those who are in the slavery, they will be delivered. He got excited and then he started continually praying, interceding for the nation. Lord, when are you going to set us free? What's going to happen? So the Lord showed him everything to Daniel, one, one man. One man, right? So I will always encourage you, if you are interceding prayer, God is seeking only one person, right? Now, if you go to the book of Daniel, and chapter 10, verses 2, 3, 5, 6, and 12 to 14, right? And uh, in order to see God, Daniel was fasting. And then he started praying, right? So, you know, Daniel was one of the captive in the Babylonian captivity. Okay? So Daniel uh, was praying. One thing I want to remind you, just I don't have time, just to briefly I will talk about. One thing we have to remind you, Daniel never prayed and pulled down strongholds over Babylon. He never prayed and pulled down strongholds. Bible say he just simply Pray to God. Simply pray to God. Lord, this is said, take care. Handle Lord. That's all. Because of prayer, there was a fighting going on in the heavenlies. Daniel personally never fought against the forces of darkness. He never. He prayed to God. And God sent the Michael the Archangel. The Michael the Archangel came and uh, fought against the Prince of uh, Tyre. Yeah. Daniel personally never fought against or pulled down the strongholds there. 
He prayed to God. He prayed to God. Right? And then, uh, uh, I like Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, uh, before your God, your words were heard. Your words were heard. And I have come because of your word. I have come because of your word. But the prince of the king, kingdom of Persia, which stood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Can you see that? Daniel prayed to God. When he prayed, the angel said, I came here to help you because of your word. What we can gather here, what we can understand through prayer or confessing the word of God out of your mouth, the angels will work for you. The angels will come to help you. The angels will come and fight against the forces of darkness. He said, because of your word, what you do in prayer, one thing we have to understand, in your prayer, the word must be spoken. That is prayer. The angels came because of Daniel's word. Word where? When he was praying, he used the word. Because of the word, Michael the archangel was released. Even the other angels took with the answer. So God expects us to speak word and through prayer. The next thing I want to share with you, prayer is a permission you give to God to involve in on the earth. He's almighty God, right? Uh, so what we can understand here, I want to encourage you. Under the old covenant, Daniel did not have power and the authority. Even he didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit. He's just a man who believes in God. Under the new covenant, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We have all the power and authority given to us. So more than the Daniel, we'll be able to do better work. So again, I want to remind you, number one, prepare the ground in order to change the nation. Through prayer. Secondly, sow the seed, which means share the gospel. Make the believers to share the gospel. Thirdly, pray. The Holy Spirit will be poured out on the nation. Fifthly, you will have a great harvest. That's the way you can change the nation or city. Anywhere. May God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we once again come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for the revelation knowledge what you gave us today. Help us, not only hearers of the word, also to be a doers of the word of God. As a Christian, it is our responsibility to share the gospel and to build the kingdom of God. Father, give the boldness and courage Every person, those who hear this word, to go and share the gospel. Also, Father God, I pray that your anointing will be upon their life. Your guidance will be upon their life. Also, I pray everything, whatever they put their hand to, that you have promised that you will bless them. We thank you for every good thing, whatever you are doing in our lives, so Father. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to pray another prayer with you, simple prayer. If you're not given your heart to Jesus all this time, this is a good time to give you. Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Don't postpone it. It's okay. What is the life you may be living here? Good life? 
perfect life right successful life but we have to understand as a human once we have to be born here and then we have to die second thing we are we have to face judgment of god one day this is what the bible says if you are not accepted christ as your personal savior and god after the death you have to go to hell i just want to be blunt and frank it is not god's will any should perish there is the only reason he sent his only begotten son to die for your sin and for my sin he is the only one qualified to forgive our sins if you say no i want to spend my eternity with god not in hell please repeat this prayer after me sincerely by faith pray this prayer after me heavenly father i come to you as a sinner i believe you send your son to this world in order to die for my sin i believe with my whole heart that jesus died buried on the third day father you raised him up from the dead now i confess jesus christ is lord over my life and i believe with your with my heart that you raised him from the dead i believe now i'm born again i'm a child of god satan has no place in my life in jesus name amen if you have prayed that simple prayer you are a born again child of god from now on even if you die it's guaranteed by the word of god that you will go to heaven and live eternally with god may god bless you and also i want to encourage you don't stop your spiritual walk here please try to find a good spirit filled bible teaching a church don't go after the statues idols it is against god if you can't find a spiritual church bible teaching church the church which will worship god in the spirit and in truth please keep in touch with us we are given below address there we are given our telephone number there please write to us or contact us somehow we'll be able to help you to find a good church and also i want to remind you our church is at number 53 one upon one our church name is christian family church christian family church number 53 one upon one every vatta road vattala if you are in gampa district or kalamba district you are welcome to participate into one of our services may god bless you don't forget next week we will meet again until then god bless you